if we assume that from, again, latency is, let's say, glass to glass, um, we know that there are lots of components on the way from when content is acquired to when it's consumed by the viewer. So, you know, there are things in the middle there, right? There's encoding, right? There's, so there's a box or a, or a virtualized container, you know, something that is turning the video from, you know, one bit rate to another, one format, one package to another. And there's things like DRM, there's things like closed captioning, there's things, you know, there's all sorts of things in the middle. Um, you know, let's talk about encoding a little bit. I know that there's been a big push, you know, amongst a lot of the encoding uh, vendors out there to do context aware encoding, right? So not applying one profile to every frame of the video, but applying multiple profiles to the frames, depending upon what's happening in the frame. So if you've got a talking head, that's different than somebody running down a field kicking a soccer ball. Um, you know, what are some choices that can be made during encoding to improve latency, right? If what if that encoder, that thing, is is responsible for some delay um, during the getting the video from the glass to the glass, you know, what are some best practices around like chunk size? What are some best practices around profile variables? And let's say your camera adds a frame of latency or two frames of latency. Your video switcher adds two frames of latency. Um, on our encoders, the default, we use um, uh, some, some techniques for rate control, and it looks ahead four frames. So it has a four frame buffer in the encoder itself. Um, the acquisition card taking the SDI signal has the buffer. So before we've even begun processing video frames, we're already, you know, six frames in, and that's about a quarter of a second, about 30 frames a second. So um, you know, that it's very easy to find yourself um, at a second of latency or half a second of latency before bytes have even left your uh, origination site. Um, you know, some of the things that we do to combat that is we can say, okay, well, we don't care that much about rate control. So we're just going to th throw that out the window. We're going to turn that um, four frame look ahead buffer off if we want low latency. Um, you know, we don't care that much about uh, quality of quality per byte efficiency. And so we're willing to spend a few more bytes um, to have lower latency. And so we might have shorter um, uh, keyframe intervals. So we're, we're sending out more iframes. You know, if you, if you want the lowest latency po uh, possible, you just, you know, put something into a, a near real-time encoder and, um, you know, MPEG TF iframe only and throw it somewhere and you, you have like, you know, 35 milliseconds of latency and it's great, but that doesn't work when we're trying to deliver um, over constrained bandwidth or, or deliver at scale. So, um, but I think, uh, you know, there's definitely ways to tune your encode profile on the origination side to get lower latency. And it, you know, if you, if you start there and work all your, all the way through your production pipeline, um, your net latency at the end, is low. If you start with a lot of latency at the beginning, you're you're going to be fighting that the whole time. It's important to uh, differentiate the two sides of the story: the ingest side and the delivery side. On the ingest, you actually often have low latency protocols, because uh, um, as Casey mentioned, if you if you have an MPEG-TS encoder, uh, and it's it's a hardware appliance like our encoders, for example, you you can achieve very low latency. Uh, you can wrap that in uh, a transport stream. Uh, you can send that either over a local network, and then you don't have any issues. But as soon as you go over the public internet to reach the cloud, um, whether for transcoding and repackaging and then delivering the video, or for direct distribution end-to-end, -end, that ingest is, is a complicated part, because often you don't have the quality of the network that you would wish you have on-prem. So getting the content into the cloud is the first challenge. And uh, in many cases in the past, uh, RTMP has been used to do this, which is a TCP-based protocol that comes with a lot of limitations because of the congestion control and, and some head-of-line blocking issues that cannot give you the full throughput. And then the emerge of UDP-based protocols, where SRT is one of them, um, there's others out there, um, 
and, and they utilize the available bandwidth better, but you have to recover for packet loss uh, that happens on the way. But then when you hit the cloud and you want to deliver to many, many, many uh, people, then um, a stream like an MPEG-TS is not very scalable because you need to de deliver the whole data live linear to every single uh, person. So that's where the, the boom of HLS started because suddenly you, you repackage the data and with the TS it's pretty easy. You just chunk the TS up and then you, you can make an HLS stream out of it. And the moment you have chunked it up and put uh, the data into segments, you can, you can scale better because you can use a caching mechanism to distribute basically files across servers and then deliver. And that's where on the delivery side then the latency is introduced.